Hey, hello there everybody and welcome! In this video, I'm going to talk about Songs of Conquest and what I personally think about it. So, the question is just, is it really a good game or, or not? I want to summarize the game before I go over the good and the bad and my personal verdict about this game. So, let's get started. I just want to pretend that you never played any of the Heroes of Might and Magic uh, franchise games before, which this game clearly originates from. So, Songs of Conquest is a turn-based, well, how to put it, it's an RPG, it's a uh, 4x game of sorts, where you conquer a world, explore it, and it is RPG in so far as you have a couple of heroes that level up and they learn skills, and you get to tinker a build together for them, as, builds, uh, as skill slots are limited, your army slots are limited, and you're playing always as one of the baseline factions, currently four of them. This is pretty much something we know from a lot of uh, games out of this genre, namely Heroes of Might and Magic was the franchise series that pretty much invented this kind of gameplay. And yeah, Songs of Conquest follows this tradition, but has a lot of innovative things going on for itself that I'm going to talk about in the course of this video. The game has a tight focus on narrative storytelling. The campaign does not only introduce the factions to you layer by layer, it's four missions per faction where you get the factions troops introduced, but also their history. Personally felt like the campaign was more like a in-depth tutorial for the world. And after that, you decide whether you play skirmishes, which are handmade maps, community made or developer made or randomly generated maps. That's where you then go crazy with all the knowledge that you got. But the campaign is well told. It's not divided in chapters, but in songs. Unless, just like the name implies, you get the Bard song telling the story of the chapters. Which is really cool. I, I really enjoyed that. So, that's the summary of Songs of Conquest. If you are familiar with Heroes of Might and Magic franchise, I think I, I haven't had to explain anything to you. But, uh, you know, I just want to keep this open for everybody. So, what's good and what's bad about it? So, first of all, I want to talk about the good things before we talk about the bad things. That is uh, today where I wanted to go. So, this game has really depth in every aspect. It is, uh, the, the building system is pretty cool. Your cities have limited building slots. That means you have to select which kind of troops you will raise, which kind of economy, economy buildings you will build, and what kind of roster you will p put together. It's enhanced further by the fact that every hero has only a limited amount of uh, troop stacks that he can carry around, and the amount of troops per stack are also limited. So altogether, it is not just building up a doom stack and rolling over the map. You can also do that to some degree, but uh, eventually, in the mid and late game, you'll have to think about a good composition, because you cannot only beat it by numbers. That's a pretty cool thing. Building and army, um, and army um, tinkering are really cool. The hero building is, for my personal opinion, it could be a little bit deeper, but it is pretty cool. We have, like I said, a skill system where we get to select various skills that can be upgraded up to level 3 except for command, which is a skill that everybody has. It just increases the amount of troops that you can carry around up to nine troop stacks per hero. That's the upper limit. So these skills, well, we have a lot of variety on these. Let me show you here. And well, they all can be, like I said, upgraded three times. And on top of that, have we have a magic system that is different. We don't have mana on our heroes. The spells or the resources for the spells are generated by our troops. And depending on the type of troops, we generate different essence, which can be then used for different spells, as you see here. It's a pretty nice system that looks a little bit complex at the first glance, but it really, really plays Don well. It is also a really innovative system, as it doesn't lead to your hero being depleted of resources at some point. It 
it invade and it invites you it invites you to to spam your magic each fight your magic is not something where you constantly have to think about is this fight worth spending my mana on and this is really really a good thing we can also upgrade our settlements to hire more of these heroes so-called wielders and yeah that's where we where we expand and altogether this game has a very tight grip on old school elements and displaying them streamlined and without uh, nonsense and everything easy understandable while adding in some nice innovative concepts like the essence generation this is really nice and the other thing which i haven't seen in this genre before is a pretty deep research system every faction can build two different research buildings where they can upgrade their empire and their units that's pretty cool stuff you get to select either you either quantity or quality for example for your troops so we can increase the amount of dudes in one troop stack for example or in the other facility we can decide to pump up the power of a certain type of troop henceforth bringing specialization into the game unlike other games in this genre here we don't just pick up a, a plethora of all the troops of our faction and off we go here you hand select which kind of troops of that faction you want to field on your specific hero and then you start even specializing further by investing your overspill resources into powering up the specific troops that you're running this is amazing this is really something i enjoyed so much as i was constantly busy like uh, thinking about what's good on this hero what kind of troops do I pick? And then I often only feel two or four different troop types on these nine stacks. And uh, with all those upgrades, you can really bring in some, some cool, innovative things. It also has multiplayer. So yeah, all in all, to summarize the good aspects of this game, this feels like the next generation of Heroes of Might and Magic through and through. It did get rid of some old janky things like the... Uh, city building screen has been completely dismissed and uh, we have this building slot system at first i didn't like it too much but now i must say it is really smart as it is a constant struggle to get the pieces together that you want to because there is not only limited building spaces there are also interdependencies for example to get this troop type on tier two we need to have first a building the gatherers and so for example if we would have forgotten about that and filled all of our small building spots beforehand we would be terribly delayed on our tier two units here and these little things they they really really feel good as this rewards you for knowing your faction well and planning ahead and thinking that's pretty good now what's bad about this game not much luckily <laughs> but there's a few things that i didn't First off, the four factions are only four factions, and uh, in all honesty, it would have been amazing to have more than just these, but, well, this is subject of further content to come, so I think this is a uh, easily fixable problem, but the big problem that I got is that the balancing of the game is a little bit too balanced in so far as i feel like the power level of the factions is very similar to one another which is in pvp aspects pretty good but led to the fact that if i didn't force myself into a specific strategy the gameplay felt pretty samey not uh, respecting too much what kind of faction i played because at the end of the day the arches of every faction are somewhat viable, the tanks of every faction are somewhat viable, the blitz troops of every faction are somewhat viable. No faction has real duds in their roster that you need to build around because, for example, nobody has real, really, really super horrible archers. Even the early on archers aren't, or the, their baseline archers, the militias, they aren't the best on the field, but they also can compete. Altogether, I don't know, I would have loved a little bit more character between the factions, but this is something, I don't know, maybe this eases out, but altogether I must emphasize, I'm a PvE player, I don't care about PvP, but I do see that this kind of balancing approach is really good for the PvP players to enjoy, 
At, at the end of the day, PvE players like me, we are not the long-term players, so I think Lava Potion did take the right step with that balance. But, well, I did I did notice that, and it was a little bit, uh, well, unpleasant to me. So, I wanted to showcase the combat here to uh, go for something here. So, combat is also something where I want to say sort of bad. The thing is... They had so many great ideas about innovations, but here, the, where combat stands, the game is very old school. There is only a little bit of terrain gameplay, which is really new, but apart from that, if you played the old Heroes of Might and Magic games, you know exactly how that combat works. Nothing new. And, well... I don't necessarily want to call that a super horrible thing, but uh, seeing all the innovations they successfully did, I was a little bit sad that they didn't have any cool new ideas on that field, because I would have been very, very curious to see what kind of stuff they came up with. But, well, apart from that, last but not least, this game can be very, very micromanagement heavy. Especially the later the game goes, the more micromanagement is there. There's a ton of little interactions that you can do. The game does a lot of quality of life things to alleviate these issues, but at the end of the day, you still have a lot of heroes to manage, you have a lot of building slots to manage, and so on and so forth. So this could be something, if, if, the, if these things, things are not to your liking, this is certainly something to note out that late game of many missions grows quite a bit tedious. I personally, I personally love to work myself turn through turn like that, but I can see that this might be not everybody's cuff. So, let's summarize. In my opinion, Heroes of Might and Magic is absolved. Songs of Conquest is the new successor. Seriously, I think, except for the old school modding community that still sticks to the old school Heroes of Might and Magic, they're doing God's work, by the way. This is where Heroes of Might and Magic really went onwards. Ubisoft just killed the franchise. So, if you are growing bored of old school Heroes of Might and Magic, you might find this game a little bit too casual. I must admit, but at the same time, I'm no PvP player, I can't really, really put a finger on that. But, I gotta say, this game has an excellent blend of RPG strategy and economy gameplay. It really captivated me from the very first moment in a way that few games nowadays do, especially since the visual and the audio presentation is top-notch. Seriously, this is lovely pixel graphics. Seriously, this looks so sweet at all ends. Even the water effects are really, really nice. And that really is something that, that, that sold me on this game. But... Personally, I was mostly sold emotionally on that storytelling because, I don't know, they have just some good authors on their work. I was wondering why the hell I should be bothered with playing frog people, but before I knew it, I played the first chapter and I was all in to the slave uh, rebellion and uh, showing those filthy barians that they can't treat or frog homies like that. I don't know. Storytelling-wise and atmosphere-wise, this game isn't that costly. This uh, campaign alone gives you a lot of bang for your buck, and I see this game having a ton of potential. Because, you know, I criticize that there are only four factions. This is expandable. There is Workshop, um, Steam Workshop uh, integration, which means the... Or, or, no, not story, Steam Workshop integration, sorry. Um, wrong game but there is map making integration campaign making integration so the community can really create content for you altogether yeah a fully wholehearted recommendation i was monitoring songs of conquest since its early access and it only became better ever ever since and yeah go for it if you like stuff like that it's uh, it's it's one of the best things that has been released in the in the last ten years, in my humble opinion. So, I rest my case at that point. I hope you enjoy, and feel free to leave me your comments, leave me your personal opinion about the game. 
Thumbs up would be appreciated, of course. Leave, feel free to subscribe, support Icon Gaming if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very delighted. With a big, big thanks to all of you crazy horses out there who do so. I deeply appreciate you folks. As I want to say a thanks to everybody watching this video until the very end. Seriously, thanks for being around and see you all next time.